capacitors. A capacitor is a way to store energy and charge to be able to use it when you want. The simplest capacitor is called a parallel plate capacitor. It involves two parallel plates, one with a positive charge, positive Q, one with a negative charge, negative Q. On a capacitor, Q denotes the charge on the positive plate. Notice that the charge net for the whole capacitor is actually positive Q minus Q, which adds up to zero. So when you talk about the charge in a capacitor, what you're referring to is the charge on the positive plate. Capacitance. The equation for capacitance is, it is Q divided by the electric potential difference. Have you seen the three, the three line equal sign before? No. Okay. That simply means is defined as. It's not derived, there's no way to derive it. We've simply made up this thing, it's called capacitance. It is the charge per unit potential difference, okay? And it's a useful cool. thing. It is essentially how much charge a capacitor can hold per potential difference for that capacitor. The dimensions for capacitance, of course, are coulombs per volt, which is called a farad. Generally, capacitance is in microfarads, picofarads, or nanofarads, something of that sort. Um, please realize that capacitance is always positive. So if you set up a capacitor like this, what you end up doing is storing energy in the electric field that exists in the capacitor. Basic idea, you have a battery a positive and a negative terminal of the battery. Let's say it's a 12 volt battery. You then have your two plates of your capacitor. You attach the positive terminal to one of the plates, the negative terminal to the other plate. Slowly, bless you, it will charge until you have a positive Q and a negative Q and a potential difference between the two. In this particular case, that would be 12 volts. You could then remove the wires and you would have energy stored in that electric field. There are many different examples of this basic concept. One is this. We have a disposable camera. A disposable camera has a flash in it. Please do not do this at home. Um, only twice out of the six times I've done this have I burned myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. So, I put in the battery. You can see that normally you have a protective case covering it. We do not at the moment. So, if I press this button here, there we go. You can actually hear it charging. So now we have charged this capacitor. This guy right here is the capacitor. This capacitor, normally what you would do is you, is you would use it to uh, do the flash, right? But we can take this and we can arc across. And we can release all of that energy, as you can see, right? So this is the capacitor. We stored energy from the battery in the capacitor and we released that energy. Seven. Yeah, just yeah, a yeah. paperclip. Now, what did you do? no, actually, <laughs> just you know, technically, I did burn myself. Oh. Oh. It wasn't as bad as it's been before. It just sends a, sends a shock through your body. Anyway, um, so what we're looking at here, the interesting thing is that I can actually hold this, and I could arc across that capacitor right there, and I will actually not get shocked. Unfortunately, I was holding this piece right here. I need to get a new one because it's slowly falling apart. Anyway. Um, so when I hold this right here, I actually do not get shocked through here. Why not? Grounded. All the energy goes into sound. Uh, right, but it could actually go through me. But why is it? If I take, I've got the two terminals here, or the two uh, posts for the capacitor. When I take this, I put it across here. I get a spark because I arc across those two. The silver. Never. <laughs> I'm not invisible. Thank you, though. 
notice when I do this, the charge is going to go from one of the connections to the other connection. It actually flows across the paper clip. It's not going to flow down the paper clip. It goes through the easiest path, which is right across that paper clip, and ends up sparking and making a fun noise and things like that. So that is just an example of a capacitor. Just for yucks, realize what we had there was, and I had to actually bend it out in order to get these numbers. Uh, it ends up multiplying it, so it's 330 volts across the capacitor for 120 microfarads. What you just saw there was approximately 0 0.04 coulombs of charge being released. That's a lot. That's it. All right, here we go. That's a lot, I don't know. Well, I, right, the basic idea was that just to give you an example of, yeah. you know, that's exactly what you just looked at. Okay, here we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out the capacitance of the easiest, the simplest of the capacitors, which is a parallel plate capacitor. So we have our two parallel plates. One is positively charged, the other is negatively charged. We're gonna figure out the capacitance of a parallel plate. Capacitor. Oh, just as an aside, um, now that we've got charge, the symbol, or what, what are the units for charge, Pottera? Uh, coulombs. Coulombs. With a C. Now we also have capacitance. The symbol we use for that is a C. And the dimensions for capacitance are farads which the, the symbol is an F. And these two C's often get confused, right? One is the C for the capacitance, and the other C is for Coulomb. So this is the dimensions, where the, the dimension, whereas C is, stands for capacitance. So there are two different C's we have, both having to do with electricity, but they are very different things. But please make sure you keep them separate. Our goal here is to figure out the capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor. Capacitance we have already defined as the charge over the electric potential difference, the amount of charge that can be stored per electric potential difference in a capacitor. Okay, Q is just the charge on the capacitor. So we need the electric potential difference, right? Because Q is just big Q, the charge stored on the capacitor. Electric potential difference in this particular case going to be equal to F. Uh, drop it. Is it negative ED? Negative ED. You know this because? It's a constant electric field. It's a constant electric field. We already know. We've de derived this. We're not going to do it again. Where D is the distance between the two plates and E is the electric field. Okay. This means we need to figure out the electric field. So notice, in order to figure out the capacitance, we need to figure out the electric potential difference. In order to figure out the electric potential difference, we need to first figure out the electric field. So we're basically figuring out what it is we need to get to the capacitance, the electric field. How are we going to figure out the electric field that exists between two parallel plates? Sierra? Uh, Gauss's, Gauss's law. Good. Please tell me <laughs> Gauss's law. Well, most surface integrals are that I symbol thing. I, I symbol thing. Dorstetter, what's it called? Oh, oh, a capital C, isn't it? Capital C with a lowercase of what letter? E. E. What does capital C with a, with a E subscript letter stand for? Electric flux. Electric flux, keep going, Blaine. Uh, closed surface integral of EDA. E dot DA. Dot DA. Equals uh, Q in over. That, uh, the strange E. The strange E, the permittivity of free space. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at just one of these plates. We'll start with the positive plate. We know the electric field looks like this around the positive plate. What is our next step, Gary, in solving for the electric field using Gauss's law? Draw the Gaussian surface. We're going to draw the Gaussian surface. Mr. P, what's the shape and orientation of the Gaussian surface? Will be a cylinder that is um, that way. The axis of the cylinder is going to look like this. We're going to have a Gaussian surface that looks like that. It's a cylinder. So again, looks like this. 
our Gaussian surface. Please keep going with the derivation here. Uh, Trevor. I was going to say, wait a minute. We don't have Trevor, do we? Oh. Sorry. We're we're gonna gonna we'll try with Tyler. <laughs> okay. I combined Tyler and Travis. What was the question? I would keep going with the uh, Gaussian surface here, figuring out the electric field. Okay. Um, so it's surface integral E dA cosine theta. And theta is zero for the round part of the cylinder. So we we'll call those the ends. Okay. So the sides. So the surface integral of the side. Oh, okay, well it's 90 degrees. But. For the side, it's just 90 degrees. So for the side, the cosine of 90 is equal to zero. So for the side, the um, electric flux is equal to zero. Good. So we have then just the two ends here. So we have closed surface integral E dA. We no longer have the dot product for the ends. Is equal to Q in divided by E naught. Uh, Sergey? Um, you can solve for Q in. Sure. Um, uh, I don't know which one to solve for. Um, oh, we can use the uh, surface charge, which is equal to Q over A. What's the symbol? Uh, lowercase city. Good. Which is equal to Q in over A of N. Therefore, the charge inside is equal to the surface charge density times the area of a single N. Good. Match. Left hand side. Um, I take the dot product. Wait, do we already take the dot we already product? We already took the dot product. We got rid of the side because the side, uh, it's a cosine of 90 degrees. It's just the two ends where the theta was zero. All right, so you, you have, you can take the E out and constant, right? True. It's constant on the end. All right, and then you have the closed surface integral of DA. What about the left-hand side? You go. So uh, then you have area of, um, well, two of the end. Great. So, oh. Everybody brought Rock area of end of the party. Oh, I feel the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the now. We get that the electric field is equal to the surface charge density divided by two e not Note that this is just for one plate. We now have two plates. Shown that in between the two plates, they, they add outside, they subtract from one another. So the electric field total between the two plates is going to be two times the electric field for one of the two plates. So the electric field total is equal to the surface charge density divided by E naught. Going back to what we had before, the electric potential difference was equal to negative E D. Now, we're only concerned about the um, the capacitance being always positive, so we're just going to use the positive value for the electric potential difference. So we're going to use the magnitude of the electric potential difference, which is just going to be equal to E times D. We have the electric field. We just figured out it's a surface charge density times D divided by E naught. So we have the electric potential difference. So we now have capacitance, which is equal to big Q, divided by the electric potential difference, or Q to, uh, multiplied by the inverse here, put the guy multiply E naught over surface charge density times D. So, capacitance is equal to, well, Q, it doesn't make sense that the capacitance of something is actually going to depend on the charge on it. So we should substitute in for the surface charge density. Surface charge density is equal to Q over A. So we have Q multiplied by the uh, permittivity of free space divided by Q over A multiplied by D. Charge cancels out, we get the capacitance equals the area times the permittivity of free space divided by D. We have figured out the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. It's equal to the, the area 
of the parallel plate, one of them, divided by d, the distance between the two of them, all of that, of course, multiplied by the permittivity of my free space. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Don't worry, we'll do other capacitances in a little bit. I'm just, I'm just going to go So that is a single capacitor. We now need to talk about how capacitors work in a, um, well actually let's find this on your equation sheet. Let's do that first. Find this equation on your equation sheet. Sorry to participate. I'm sorry to hear that. On the equation sheet, who's got it for me? Tim. It's not on your equation sheet. It's different, slightly different on your equation sheet. Say again? It has a K in it. The K is called the dielectric constant, and we will get to that hopefully at the end of class today. So notice, we have derived it assuming that there is a vacuum between the two plates, and near the end of the class we'll talk about what happens when we put something between the two plates. It changes the capacitance. We'll talk about how and all the effect. 